You're watching Cougar Tracks Game Day, powered by Bank of American Fork. Welcome into another edition of Cougar Tracks Game Day. Alex Curie here in Salt Lake City, Dave Noriega down in Provo. And as we watch this one happen, Dave, I think uh, the first half was that lackluster kind of thing. And before he went into the locker room, Coach Kalani Sitake called, called it, quote, stupid football. So, uh, and boy, as we got into it with our predictions, I was going, we were way off, man. We didn't have any idea what was oh, going to yeah. go on in this game. You want to try to clash the pocket. They hit as he throws, and it's high and hot. Still on the run. Downfield to the Minutemen, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, 15. Bernard Davis, 10-5, touchdown. Uh, things started to come back a little bit for BYU. The second half, 37 points for the Cougs and their offense. Uh, quite the output. Really, it was a, a shocking game. UMass was way faster. They were way more physical. They were way more of everything in the first half. And, and I thought, man, maybe we just vastly underrated this team. And then the second half came. Snap is back. The placement is down. The kick is in the air. Approaches the uprights. It is through for three yeah. on that roster. Got some people. Oh, he Kick is on its way after the good hold and placement. Kickoff to UMass. Rogers taking it on the far side of the field to the near side. The ball comes loose as he's tackled shy of the 20. Hand off Harvey. Oh, Harvey makes yeah. it on In the gun. Being chased from his right foot. Right there's a for Taysom. Taysom sets to fire, now takes off to run. He's got to the end zone, and Taysom will score one for six. Shotgun from second and four, his team's 26. He throws in and he'll intercept it. I think it's a pick for BYU at the 36 yard line. It is the only throw to the receiver. KJ moves to the right hip of Mang, who sets to throw. Goes for the end zone, and it is This one's high and short. They had the worst third quarter of any of the teams in, in that BYU played this year, one of the worst in college football. And so let's get right to the predictions. Okay. And uh, last week, huge week for you, and then things flip-flop. <laughs> it got pretty amazing for me. So we're going to start things off. I'm I asked you. I'm happy for you, Alex. You know, I'm a, I'm a big enough man to be happy for other people's successes, even yeah. yours. L Hey, listen, last week I begrudgingly said the same thing, gave you a high five, but uh, this week uh, I asked you right off the bat, will Tanner Mangum have more passing yards than Taysom? I thought, and you thought the same thing, that Taysom w or that Tanner would get a lot more playing time, and he didn't. Uh, Taysom ended up with 171 uh, passing yards, Tanner with 19. He did have the only throwing touchdown of the game, though. I thought, so. I thought you were talking about touchdowns, not actual passing oh. yards. I thought, I thought you meant will he have more touchdowns. Yes, yeah. I thought he'd have more touchdowns. No, I whiffed on that. I mean, 179 yards passing is – it's nothing to write home – or 171 yards passing. Yeah, That's yeah. not exciting. That's not great. That's not a good number for BYU passing. But, uh, <laughs> you know, Tanner only had, what, 19? But the one touchdown he had was a, an absolute dart to Garrett Jurgens. Uh, yeah. Garrett turns around and the ball is just right there between the numbers. I think the ball actually caught him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, we were <laughs> – it was four passes on the day. One of them was a touchdown, so not bad for uh, Tanner Mangum getting in there. But I was surprised he didn't play as much. Now, uh, you asked me a true or false. Uh, you said, will the defense have at least two takeaways? And uh, because they had such a struggle last week against Southern Utah, I said they were going to get back to their turnover ways and get two plus, and they did. They had four, and I think they were all in the second half. You had the yeah. two kickoff fumbles – and then you had the Bernard pick six, and you had another, uh, the Armstrong interception, which I thought was uh, it was great for to see him get on there. But that's what Coach Tuiaki wants from his defense is tons of takeaways. And they even scored points, too. He's big ups on his defense today. The Bernard pick six was hilarious because, I mean, he just threw it right to him. They, he was going the other way, and, and Francis said after in the postgame interview, he's like, I thought the, the play was totally away from me. And then he just threw it to me. And then I was like, I'm so tired. I just hope oh, someone yeah. would block for me. And, you know, remember, Francis was a running back last year. He had some ability to to create to run in space, and, and I, I, I didn't think anyone was going to keep him out of the end zone, not at, well, not at 260 pounds. And uh, Coach Sataki also revealing that Harvey Longy – uh, playing at tailback today, of course, uh, for the injuries they've had in the backfield, including with Jamal Williams. 
Uh, he said that that Bernard, uh, that Francis Bernard, has been lobbying to play running back like all week and really all season. And uh, he goes, and he's like, you know what? Tell you what, you uh, you keep getting those pick sixes, and that's how you'll get your scores because it's not happening in the backfield. Okay, uh, Dave, I asked you who would score their first uh, career touchdown of the day, and after the amazing week that he had last week. Uh, you and I both agreed that Braden Albacri would be the guy to score for BYU. Uh, Did he even get no, in the so, game? No, I don't even know. We, by the I fourth quarter, he, was, he hadn't. I think he was injured. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I was didn't going see on. See him. So I'm going to give myself a pass on that one. Oh, uh, kind that's of very a, nice of you. You know, like when you when you uh, and, and schoolmaster can help me out here. Oh you, come on! You know, don't you help take him a out. class, and then all of a sudden you have to withdraw. I think hey, all of a sudden, of all of a sudden, the dog eats your homework. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> so we'll just jump past that one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Who did have their uh, Harvey Longy with his first career touchdown as a BYU Cougar, and uh, and then also Garrett Jurgens, as you mentioned, yeah. first career. You would have scored points uh, with that, but uh, yeah, there's yeah. like 112 guys on the team, and you said I got to pick one of them. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Great question. Well, I just said, I Give just me figured that we'd see. I, t- I thought it was an easy right. one because Braden Albacri would be doing it. Next All right. jerk face. All right, the next one was uh, BYU quarterbacks. How many rushing yards, you asked me, would they end up with at the end of the day? And, and you picked uh, a super vanilla 60-something. I picked 63, and uh, Taysom ended up with 81. Tanner uh, had a negative one-yard rush, so that brought the quarterbacks to 80 yards total on the day. Uh, so a pedestrian day for the quarterbacks running, but with KJ Hall and then uh, right. you saw uh, uh, Harvey Longy coming in and scoring two rushing touchdowns. I mean, two hundred forty-seven uh, yards rushing. Yes. That's incredible. Yeah, they had a big day on the ground, and uh, and then on the flip side, the defense held UMass to sixty yards rushing. So you're going to see that rush defense go up again. And then finally, the scores, Dave. The scores we did uh, well. We both you did really well. It, yeah, I was uh, I was in the running for a perfect game. Which is very tough, and uh, you said forty-two to three, which is a thirty-nine point differential. Very, very well uh, called. Uh, I said fifty-one to ten, not anticipating, of course, that they would have missed that first PAT. You. If that first PAT would have oh. gone through, Dave, I said fifty-one nine. You've been or it so ended good up, on it ended up fifty-one nine. Year. I said fifty-one ten. You've been yeah, he so hadn't missed good all on season. scores all year. Yeah, I don't so, know what it is. Why aren't we uh, in Vegas, man? Yeah, Taking we got to take on this. A roadie. We got to take this game on the road. All right, Dave. So uh, BYU playing Utah State next week. Utah State uh, obviously has had a down year, but uh, they won't go to a bowl game. This has been considered their bowl game, I guess, uh, for them if they go down to Provo and get a W. They're going to have a chip on their shoulder for sure next week, right? Hey, and if BYU wins, that's eight wins in the regular season. I, I mean, eight wins in this schedule. I mean, that's a, an unqualified success. I mean, it's amazing. People should yeah. be doing handstands at eight wins. But I think it's a little disappointing still because there were so many games, those close four games, losses, they got away with just one or two points. Could yeah, have BYU fan. A, gr- a good season into an epic season. Yeah, BYU fan is going to lament uh, those close plays, of course, in some of those close games. So uh, there it is. Our predictions uh, revealed on paper. The grades are, have been given and uh, we have to take our lumps so for Dave Noriega down in Provo I'm Alex Kiru we'll be back next week for our final regular season predictions on Cougar Tracks game day we'll see you then Cougar Tracks game day is powered by Bank of American Fork big city banking small town service